Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about object level security and kind of like an overview of what actually is object level security within Salesforce. Now, we can't talk about object level security without talking about record level security. So let's have a little breakdown of kind of what they are um, and how they work. So first of all, it's not necessarily like an object level versus record level and they're, they're battling out. No, they really work together in harmony to create a security experience to help keep your data and your clients and your deals all secure from whomever you wanna keep it secure from. So everything starts out at the object level with security. Let's actually take this example. So if you think about a big library, like when you were going to school um, or college or whatever, object level is like the library section and the record level is like the books in those different sections. Objects or maybe subjects such as natural history, calculus, World War II, those would be classified or the sections would be classified as objects and they house a lot of different data. They house a lot of different books within that library. And then the records would be the different books inside of those sections at the library. So for natural history, it would be um, amphibian creatures would be a specific record or a book. In calculus, it would be calculus to make your head hurt or inside of that book section. And then for the section of World War II, it would be battles in France in World War I. If we think of this more in Salesforce terms, objects would be things such as the opportunity object, the leads object, the accounts object. And then the record level would be the individual records that you see and maybe own. So in a trailhead org, you're going to have, maybe you'll have Ursa Major Solar as an account and you'll need to have record level access to see that account. Um, you'll also need to have the object level access to the account. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and dive in a little bit more into object level security and what those features are and what those do. So object level securities, these features come first and they come before record level. You have to have your object level set before you can even dive into record level. Object level opens up the different objects that you have or the different sections that you have within Salesforce. So again, things like opportunities, leads, contacts, accounts. So the different features that you have for object level security are gonna be org wide defaults, profiles, permission sets, and field level security. These are gonna be the main ones for object level security. These are gonna be changing in three-ish years, but these are gonna be listed here on the slide in order of how they typically go in opening up access. One thing about Salesforce security is that you start out either really closed or a really as a really closed tight lipped org or you're going to start out as a really open org but as you go further down so let's say we had org wide defaults in our library example here they opened up access to the world war ii history section and org wide default did not open up access to the calculus section so what you could do is with a profile, you could then open up access to the calculus section, or you could open it up with permission sets. Um, org wide defaults are gonna be your baseline. You can't go any more private than what your org wide defaults are. So if your accounts are private, then only people who have access through the profile or permission sets are going to be able to see that object. This also helps establish what someone can do on an object. So things like, I guess, cred. So create, read, edit, delete. And sometimes you also have edit or see, view all and modify all, but be, as an admin, be very careful <laughs> to give these things out because if someone wants to go awry with all those settings, then they can. So just be really tight with who has those two specific things per the object. So now next is gonna be profiles. And this typically is used to open up access to a group of people. And now oftentimes, and almost 100% of the time, a profile is going to open it up to a group based upon their job functionality. So this is going to be for sales or service or marketing. And they're gonna open up different objects depending on their job functionality as a group or a department. So 
for the sales department, you're going to open up read access to most salespeople, but then we'll get into permission sets in just a sec where you can open it up to additional people. Again, for profiles for a service person, you're going to open up things like cases and accounts. Maybe for marketing, you're going to have campaigns and you're going to have maybe leads as well to allow them to come in and do their job. Um, again, profiles open it up to a group that's similar to um, a department. Now, permission sets are very, very similar to profiles and they have a lot of the same permissions and are structured very similarly to profiles. But these are gonna be used to open it up to a single person or a small group. So let's talk about our sales example. You're gonna have a profile that is going to open it up to the whole sales group and department. Now you're gonna have sales managers and they need extra functionality than a sales rep. They would possibly need to be able to create records. They would need to be able to create opportunities, leads, need to be able to edit those opportunities and leads. They would need to maybe delete and that's what you give to most sales managers. And it's very similar to the service department and it's very similar to the or how you would use it in the sales and marketing departments. So that's kind of permission sets and they can also allow you to open up some really random one-off accesses both on the profile and permission sets just depending on the scenario that you have. So like managing reports and dashboards, that's a setting that you can have. You don't necessarily need to know like all those different settings and where they are, they're very easily Googleable um, and find out <laughs> where they're located and what they do. Um, and then finally, we have kind of the most granular part of object level security, and that's going to be the field level security. And this is going to be set on each individual field and connect back to the profile to enable someone to be able to either see the field or be able to edit the field. So let's say we had a really sensitive field that we didn't want everyone to be able to see, like a social security number. While there is an encrypted one, an encrypted field type that you could use, you also only want people who have um, a higher job level, not necessarily just a sales rep to be able to see that, but maybe like a sales director who's above a manager. And then you'd only enable that possibly with a permission set for the sales director to see that or even edit that field. But that is going to be um, object level security features and kind of how you use them in conjunction with record level security. I am going to be doing another video here pretty soon on record level security, so be sure to tune in for that. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can check out the courses down below in the description box or on salesforceupscale.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at EmilyCallMBA. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.